coming from the the cheap end of it, as it were, up to the more expensive. Yeah. These are the looks. The, 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 the jab a standing army. If you know what I mean. Yeah. They, uh, like we have nowadays, what they did is each lord would have his uh, a retinue of his personal bodyguard, his paid soldiers, professional soldiers. And the rest were men that were led to come over fought on, you know, they worked on fields or whatever they yeah. did, and were called up. So, because they're not professional soldiers, they will get an uh, agricultural uh, implement like this one. They put it on a pole. If they were lucky, they might be issued with a hat helmet, or they might have one that's been passed down or whatever. And then they were given a piece of cloth for the livery, and the livery is the colours of the Lord. This is to John Savile from Yorkshire, and your, your, your typical Lord, one of the biggest, Stanleys from this area. Yeah. The Stanleys who fought on both sides in the War of the Roses at different times. Earl of Warwick, he had a personal retinue of about 400 men at, uh, personal soldiers and 8,000, you could call them, they're an army 8 to 10,000, that were big, one of the biggest. Uh, Lord in the, in the area, and he fought on both sides of the Mother Rose as well. Changed sides after, a bit, but we're not going yeah. to that now. Anyway, um, <laughs> the most numerous <laughs> soldier, eighty percent of the soldiers on the battlefield were archers. Yeah, uh, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, the men at arms about six to one. The Agincourt, which is the most famous archery battle, this but the English they, they landed at uh, Old Fleur. They were back the way up to Cali because they were thought they were, you know, I think on a fruitless mission, and they were intercepted at Agincourt mm. by thirty thousand French knights, as it were, who thought we're not we're not to worry about because they're only peasants with a stick, you know, they can't do much really, to be fair. Um, so the archer, that's where I suppose the battle where everybody remembers them full out in 1415, and the archer would have his longbow. Or warbow, they called it a warbow, then the Victorians called it a longbow. Um, this one is made of ash, but the best wood, for the best cast, that means pound for pound, wood, just patch your arrows much further, was yew wood, and there's one uh, right in front of the house. But um, and you see them in graveyards as well, yew trees. Um, and they were, they were the best, but this is uh, this is quite adequate for what I want. self knot so you just cut that, rather than horn nut, which some have, which are there for, you know, to stop it uh, wearing the wood away, they horn knot, so they were also at the time. And then of course the arrows, these are sometimes made of ash, and they are different arrows, Yeah, because arrows were one of the big limiting factors, wasn't it? Pardon? Arrows are sort of one of the reasons we actually have military logistics now. Just trying to keep them supplied with arrows was one of the hardest bits, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. They, in fact, I'm told that at Agincourt they had they took arrows across with them in barrels. They didn't make them on the spot, as it did, because mm. you can imagine you've got 6,000 arrows, arches, 12 arrows a minute, that's 72,000 times 60, because it lasted roughly about an hour. You're talking millions, yeah. so... They fetched them across in barrels and they had little boys who used to go with sweets or in between dropping sheaves of arrows off and the reason they stuck them in the ground is it's the easiest way to get them on the bow. This thing, you know with Robin Hood with the quiver over his yeah. back, is Hollywood I'm afraid. It, you know, so if next time you see Kevin Cosner or whatever, so, no, I'm sorry Kev, <laughs> sorry that didn't happen mate, that didn't happen. What they did was they'd have a, well, they'd have a bag made a willow and they put them out and so on. Or they used to also shove them down the back of the belt like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what we use. Then pull them out and do it that way. I can't, I can never do that because I always find I pull all my hands out at once. But <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah, been there. <laughs> but, so, like in your shed, you might have a, or workroom, you might have different tools for doing different things. Well, archers also had different, or people used going there, had different arrows for different purposes. So, I've just got a quick selection here, there are others as well in there. Oh, that's the same as that one right anyway. The more, these, some of them are military arrows and some of them aren't in there. 
that's a military arrow. It's called a bodkin. And you've seen he's got, he's got chain mail, like silver mail on his collar. And the idea is that if you've got a bodkin arrow and it's come, it'll go through the chain, split the chain, through the padded jack, we haven't got one underneath, and then into the person behind. So that's the person at that one. Now there's a big standing myth in archery whether you could actually split plate armour, which is what they've got in, in the 15th century. This is plate, best plate, etc., with an arrow. So they had a short bucket. Uh, and the idea is because it's short, if it hits plate on from a short distance, flat on, it'll go through it, punch it, th punch through it. I've got, I've seen video, up team video for it and against it. But anyway, I'll let, you will have to decide. I'll let you decide. So there we go. Then starting to get these barbed arrows. Now the thing about these barbed arrows and that one to a certain degree is that when they're in, they don't come out very easily. Okay, that's a Type 16. They found one of these uh, at Towton in one of the remains of the archers that were buried under Towton Manor. Uh, and the idea is it goes in, sticks in, don't come out very easily. So if you've got a problem, like Henry V had, where they had one in the face, because you can't shove it through because you've got your skull behind, it won't come out, so what do you do? You know, you're like right cutting into somebody, aren't you, as it were, to try and get it. I'll tell you the story later if you want, but uh, uh, what happened, but anyway. And these as well. These are for uh, shooting at horses, big games and that. If you've got a man at arm, if you've got a man with a, oh, on a horse, in play time, you don't shoot the man. You shoot the horse. Because if the horse, if you put the horse down or whatever, or it rears, it'll, it'll come off it. But it's trying to hit him, you know, the play time is not that easy. So that's those. Uh, and these hunting adders as well, same principle, will come in, won't come out. But if you like, adders, the first kind of recycling, military recycling, you could help. Because if you shot something, and I'm trying to find something that the use is for small game, it could be a bucket. So imagine you shot something with that. You're not going to kill it more than likely. If you shot a deer with it, you won't kill it a direct shot. But what you don't do, you might lame it, so eventually, it'll, when you track it, it'll go down. So you, you get the arrow out, take the deer home on your shoulder, arrow flint style. Then when you get home, you cut it all up, get your arrow head back off there, and you recycle your arrow then. And they used to wax them on as well, by the way, a lot of time. They used to wax them on, so you could do that. And that one, which is, what do you think that one's for? It's one of a style, but why? It's got rope, obviously. Well, that is like match cord, like that is. And you dip it in something that's inflammable, oil, fat, or whatever. You light it, you shoot it at somebody's thatch roof. The oxygen going through it will cause it to glow. When it lands, it'll set fire to the thatch. That's the purpose of it. Does it work? Because often you hear things and do stories. And, and that, well, I thought one we did Bolton Castle, Castle Bolton, which is in North Yorkshire, opposite Midland Castle. No, right. Um, and it was the end of the day, and they used to have a big straw boss that they they have a go out through with for children or people that came along during the day. And it went out 24/7. You know, take it in at night time. So when everybody had gone, so we we did exactly that. We dipped it something flammable, lit it. And we shot it into this straw boss thinking, we'll just see if the things that we're telling people actually are true. Um, and sure enough, it had went in and we thought, that's nah, not worth And then so we saw this like smoldering, it had gone through the outside layers, but the core must have been fairly dry and set fire to it. So buckets of water later, we thought, yeah, it does actually work. <laughs> so that's the, that's the most common um, soldier. And they were aimed. Um, oh, that was the most common helmet. It's called a kettle helmet because you boil water in it, food with it, or whatever you want. Put your uh, uh, string under it, keep it dry if you want. And it, the idea of it is that 
anything coming down uh, stops it hitting your face. The downside of it is, if you ever do, anybody do target archery? If you do target archery, you're taught to shoot oh, like yeah. that, a T. You cannot shoot that bow and arrow with an helmet on accurately with one of those helmets on. If you ever see illustrations of medieval archers, they're actually doing that. Uh, and the actual action, because this is a reenactment bow, it's about 40 to 50 pounds. They shot a bow 100 plus, 120, 30, 40 pound blows. You can't, it, they're really, really strong, obviously, pound for pound. So what you do is you have to do an action. So you actually do that. And then you're not shooting in the main at a target. You're shooting into the air because you're, your enemy is 100 yards away. It would, it would cover about um, 240 yards, 150 yards. This is the 15th century. This is a crossbow. And crossbow and crossbowmen weren't very popular. Why, I hear you ask? Well, I can shoot 12 hours a minute, minimum, that's the requirement needed. I can load this with five rows, maybe one shot per minute. Why would I employ somebody, a mercenary, to shoot one a minute when I can get my own people to shoot 12 hours a minute? You might as well stick with what you already know. So if you like the, um, Arrow bow and arrow, the ar archers were the machine guns of the Somme, as it were. They would shoot rapidly, fairly rapidly, anyway, quickly. As I said, most of them that came to shoot a crossbow were um, mercenaries from the Low Countries uh, and from Italy. And that's why this shield is called a pervase, because a lot of them from Northern Italy, they are called Parva. So, Par, Parva, pervase. This is a 15th century one. I'll uh, demonstrate it. This is called the stock. This is called uh, the prod. And that's called the rolling nut. And the way it works is... You get a sp this spanning device, a big metal thing. Just right by your feet, mate. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Can't see for looking. <laughs> These. You wind it up, all the time you stood behind this pervasive and there's archers I don't know or ever firing, firing or shooting at you, you're winding it up, trying to keep calm, and when, when it gets up to the rolling nut, which I can't do it without loading it really, you then got a string held by the nut, this is the trigger. You retreat or you stand up. You put your crossbow full there on the rest and you wait because it's a siege, it could be there ages, a long time. Sometimes I lasted months, weeks. You put your bolt on, that's called a crossbow bolt, not a crossbow arrow. It's to get a bolt from the blue, so I'm told. Might be another one of those myths. And you wait for some poor person to come <laughs> past. I'm not pointing at you. It's not loaded, you know, it won't, it won't, it won't you know, do anything. You press the trigger, trekker, that allows the rolling nut to move, spin. That allows the string to go and shove the bolt into the blue yonder. It wings its way towards the target, that's why it's called a bolt. I am told a bolt from the blue, and they're sometimes called a quarrel, comes from that word. Pick a quarrel with somebody and receive a bolt from the blue. <laughs> and that's a botkin arrow. Okay. And then finally, you've got the primitive form of good. These are primitive forms of gun with a touch um, claw match, right, if you well, yeah. which I've just got in this bag. Right. Uh, it ignites the main <coughs> charge and that, <laughs> when it ignites, blows the projectile out to the front. Yeah. 
Then it's got right. nowhere else to go, it has to go that way. That's yeah. it, yeah. Well, it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. What about, yeah. would anything not come back up there? Yeah, it does, yeah. That's what yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, yeah. a cannon as well, which I don't fetch because I can't, I can't fetch everything, is it? Well, so, um, what time are you doing it later? And on? that, uh, yeah, about half past one. Right. And that is uh, equivalent to a 30 cal. Oh, Which is the machine gun on a <laughs> yeah. US light machine gun. And it should, it would, if I put it in, yeah. fire something like that out of it. What they did in those days, they'd have lead, they'd have an iron core or something like that, put it in a mould with lead, and then as it comes out and it hits something, the iron core from the centre punches through. But they also use stone. Uh, <coughs> or mix of metal, and they also made these, which you can imagine uh, from that one is, which is metal, lead ball, wrap them in linen, tie it up, ram it down your cannon, and then when it fires out, it's like a shotgun, it comes out and spread shots, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, again, we've got, we've got better and better at killing people. It's terrible, isn't it? As years have gone back, that, that's all. You, shove, yeah. you would shove it down the big gun and then ram it down, and away you go. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> that badge, we'd have been all right with her, no? <laughs> is one that was commissioned specially right, well, for the going. funeral of Richard III <laughs> at, Thanks, Le at Leicester, uh, Leicester right. back in 2014, <coughs> I think it was. Right. Yeah. And they, when they fetched his uh, coffin up, uh, and being ill, they had, they had his cannons out, about seven big cannons, they gave him a 21 gun salute and right. he came up fired cannons off. So, that's my there was no, personal claim to fame. There was nothing as brutal as hand-to-hand -hand combat, is there? No, 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 no. Yeah. No, no it's the ones, true. Modern is lethal, isn't it? But you, you see your enemy coming and... Yes, and Mash him up to bits, yeah. That, that's yeah. what they did with theirs, weren't they? Yeah. Um, stuff, so, yeah. Right, we might catch you later on then. Yeah, well, well I'll pass one. I'm going to go up there and uh, discharge the... Uh, the Thanks for your uh, knowledge.